What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video. This video is going to be looking at the tactics behind a three-man wide structure often found in a 4-3-3 system. Before I get into the tactics behind that, this video is going to overlap a lot with rotations, so be sure to check out both my books in the description below, and let's get right into the video. So as we mentioned, the wide structures and in this particular instance, the three-man wide structure is going to be made up of the fullback, the attacking central midfielder on either side, and the winger. So from here, we create a base of the wide structure of the fullbacks, as we see it on our screen, the width created by our wingers, and then the inside attacking midfielders will then be the source of progression. Now we're going to look at a few different types and how these structures can come into play when we're looking to progress the ball and threaten the defense. So the first of which is when our fullback moves into a wide area, creating dual width. Now this is primarily used to stretch and affect the defensive wide midfielder or whoever is oriented towards the wide fullback. So with this increase in width and the use of dual width, the defense will have to be more oriented towards a wider area of the field, allowing for more space to be created in central areas and ultimately looking to progress through the half space. But if not, if they become unbalanced the defense, we can simply progress around the opposing team's block. So as we see, the defense shifts over to then deal with the increase in width and the two-player occupation. This could then create a free player between the lines in the cover shadow in the blind spot of the two midfielders of the other team. So operating in this space between the lines promotes a lot of dangerous opportunities for the team in possession and starts to affect the defensive structure in multiple ways, forcing them to shift in more complicated patterns. So as we see for our next wide structure, we'll look at a rotation very commonly used with our midfielder dropping deeper, becoming a deep line playmaker, becoming more narrow, our winger inverting, and then our fullback progressing on and creating width. Now we'll notice the wide structure is very similar to the original shape, but the biggest difference is now the width and then the player between the lines are much deeper than they were previously. So this will attract players from deeper lines to then force them into a decision whether they jump into a higher area and potentially leave space in behind. So here's one way we can try and affect the defensive shape to then create space in behind just by using these two players in a deeper area. And now when these players move higher, we'll then signal to our team that we're trying to exploit a different type of superiority. So now we're looking to then create a two versus one against the fullback from the other team using the half space and wide area. This also will typically pin the defenders in a more solidified way and create space earlier in the team's buildup. But now moving on into our last shape, we'll look at an overload between the lines with our attacking midfielder and our winger inverting. This then creates two players between the lines now with single width of a fullback, and this then offers probably the most flexibility between the lines by having these two players because then they can create partnerships and move off of each other very well. Then this could then also affect the defense in a more specific way because we have direct access to the midfielders of the other team and the defense causing them to pin as well as affect the midfield. So by having this presence in the half space, the team will oftentimes become hyper compact and offer solutions through the wide area to progress around the defensive block. And this is where we're going to wrap up the analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.